Hey, hey guys, Shahar with, with Curious Mondo. Mondo. Welcome, Welcome to Art, Art and Biz Week. week. Uh, we, we have five, five, five or six days, days I don't even know, here, here for you that we, we want, want to cover. Uh, today, today we are going to be talking about what's next after all this crisis and a little bit about human behavior. behavior. But, but before, before uh, we, we dive, dive into the topic, topic just, just a few things. things. First of all, it's the first time that we are streaming from our home, home here. So it's, it's a test for us, for us as well if something goes wrong. wrong. I have dogs, and, and I mean plural, several. Uh, so, so let's hope everything goes as planned. But if not, well, uh, we are adapting to a new situation as well as all of us are at the moment. And every day we are going to be covering one topic. So. Today, again, about what's in the future for us and a little bit of how people behave so we can actually predict the future and adapt our art business to that. Tomorrow, we have basics of live streaming. I'm going to show you a simple setup that we actually use with some instructors that are remote and it works really well, so you may want to use that. You know that uh, more than ever, the internet now is becoming very, very important for artists. Uh, on Wednesday, we have have positioning your artist's statement. The artist's statement is more important than you might think. It's not only when you're going to submit something to a gallery that, that's useful. You're going to understand why, and I'll give you an example uh, of one and a few tips here and there. I'm not an expert on that, but I took a course, and I know a few things that I can share with you. Day four, uh, Thursday, being on uh, top of mind with your consumers, consumers because, because if you're thinking thinking about art and business, you need to be thinking who you're selling to and what do they want, what do they desire, and what will they want and desire after the crisis as well. And day five, which is Friday, some tips and, and things that you can use and maybe also some ideas of new business models for artists that may be surfacing right now. Now. Why should I talk to you about that, right? That's the first thing. Well, for those that don't know me, again, I'm Shahar Boyan. I've been an artist for a while. I like a lot to deal with fiber, but I also do some sculpting, a lot of beading. I, I like to play around in several mediums, and that's how I can express myself. Uh, I, I am the owner of Curious Mondo, which is a, a distance learning platform for artists. We have live classes every week online and people can watch for free. And of course, we also have a library of those courses that people can purchase. And Curious Mondo has been around now for five years. Before that, I was doing live streaming in another industry, uh, a local industry here for about two years. And that's where we thought, wow, this is really, really cool. Uh, maybe we should translate that into a more broad audience. And that's why we went into the arts field uh, with Curious Mondo. And because I, I always uh, put my feet on that. I'm from Brazil, if you can see the accent. And I had a website there for 18 years where we used to sell tutorials about arts and crafts. And uh, before that, before uh, Curious Mondo, Together with my daughter, we worked for many years as marketing consultants. So here in the U.S. for at least 12 years, uh, we did marketing consulting to several companies, all sizes, uh, but we did specialize in companies in the home care industry. So companies that were manufacturing devices for uh, the aging baby boomers. And uh, we apply a marketing that is called neuromarketing that is based on behavior. And that is why I think many times we can predict the future, even though in a moment like this, we all, we all have more questions than answers, right? Uh, but there are some things that we can say, okay, this is quite sure, 95% sure, uh, this is how it's going to go. I like this type of marketing exactly because there is less guesswork. Uh, we, are, we are relying on the brain of people, and especially in the area where they hold fears and emotions, the amygdala, and you know more or less, or actually you know that that part of the brain hasn't changed in 50,000 years, so it's quite predictable how people will behave. And you can translate that into consumers, of course, right? Now, 
uh, I took several notes during the week about what I think is going to happen, and they are not in any specific order. So we are going to start talking about, and may maybe everything will make sense to you, and you will think, okay, I can use this in my art business, or if you're in another business, in another business as well. Uh, the art world is interesting because uh, we can say it's deeply impacted by the crisis, right? Why? Because a lot of artists would go to shows, to fairs and trade shows, or to galleries to sell their art, or they would rely a lot on in-person classes to bring income. And suddenly, that is out no more, right? There is nothing you can do about that. So many of us really saw uh, zero income overnight, and that's not fun at all. So that's why we are going to focus uh, a lot on the art side of the business. Now, this is live, and it's live for a reason, because you can interact with me anytime you want. So I'm going to get here the questions that Nashla will send. Whatever you're watching, if it's on Curious Mondo, there is a chat box there below the video. If you're on Facebook or any other place, there is a comment box someplace. You can post your questions there, and I'll be happy to answer. Okay, so first of all, what's going on? You saw in the last few weeks, I think we were all uh, shocked, right, with how fast this came upon us and how to react to all this and also how to be proactive in a situation like that. And I think for the first two weeks, uh, we were just looking because things were changing so fast and they were all so un unexpected and so surreal. It's like living a fiction book. I, for one, never thought I could be in a situation that where the whole world comes to a stop. It's like, okay, stop and now restart again. And it, it, it's very difficult to know how to navigate that. Not only that, as humans, we are really not into change very much. We don't like that, and for many reasons. One of the reasons is it takes us out of our comfort zone. And then it, you have this plethora of unanswered questions, and it becomes very difficult to see, okay, should I do this or should I do that? And then there is all the emotional toll that it takes on us. I, even if you might be you know, safe at home and you, you were home before because that's how you worked and you liked, it, it, it's unsettling, right? Because we are being asked uh, to keep our distance from people, uh, have less interactions with people we love. Maybe you cannot hug your grandbaby right now, or maybe you cannot hug your mother right now, and all this has a huge emotional toll in all of us. And it's difficult, and there are many moments, me included, that I just want to sit and do nothing because, you know, it's exhausting, if anything. But we know there will be an end to all this, and we know we have to then slowly restart going to what we know as normal life. Well, the thing is that when we go back, it's not going to be normal life as we used to know. Why? Because we are going, we are changing, right, as we, we talk, we interact with each other here. We are changing as human beings because many things that we had as certain, uh, they are not certain anymore, right? We have realized that actually we are quite fragile, right? Something tiny that we cannot even see can really create havoc in the whole world and can uh, take people we know away from us. So... We know now that we are not those superheroes that we maybe once thought we were. And the other thing is uh, we cannot rely on a lot of things, for example, in production, right? We thought everything would be at our uh, touch whenever we wanted, and now we are seeing uh, things that are extremely important, like the masks, for example, not being there. Things that we need not being there. Well, in our mind, we are telling our unconscious mind that uh, we are not as safe as we thought we were, we are not as strong as we thought we were, and we uh, cannot rely on things being provided to us. Now, it looks like a, a, all bad, but it's not. It's actually just guiding us on how we are going to behave from now on. So, for example, we've been asked now to stay home. And you may be home now for two weeks, like some of us, or four weeks, depending on where you are in the world, even more. And at the beginning, I know you felt uneasy 
uh, not because you had to be home, but because you were told to be home. <laughs> That's what we have a hard time with. Uh, what, what do you mean I cannot go out? Until you, you start thinking, I cannot go out because I'm preserving my life and the life of people that I know and everybody else out there. But it's unsettling, right? And you think, okay, when this is over, I'm out of here, right? One interesting thing that we can predict uh, is um, a term that was coined by Faith Popcorn many years ago. Uh, called in the, in her book was the Popcorn Report, if I'm not wrong. And she termed, and that was 2001, so a long, really a long time ago, but she t coined the term cocooning. That was the, the movement that many boomers at that point uh, would, la would rather be home than anywhere else. And she talked about uh, having home companions maybe that you could even talk to in the future. Who today doesn't have an Alexa or a Google uh, uh, device in their homes? So many things that she predicted. But the fact is that that happened, that cocooning happened uh, at that time, but it's going to happen again. Because even though right now you may be thinking, I can't wait to get out of my house, uh, you, are also, you are also dealing with all these emotions that I just told you about, that you cannot rely on production, that you feel uh, you're fragile. There is fear. Of course, there is fear in all of us at this moment. So when this is all over, yes, at the first moment, we are all going to go out. But in the long term, we are going to want to be home because... The uh, home is our safe space, and that's where we want to be. We can control everything that is inside the house, uh, and we need that. We need that sense that I can control things because we are living in a moment that looks like we cannot control anything. So once uh, the spirit is over and we go out and we have fun, the most predictable behavior is this, that we are going to be really really happy at home, which brings a lot of opportunities to artists. Let me just uh, acknowledge some people here and we'll go on. Uh, Judy Robson is saying hello from Ontario, Canada. Coco is saying thanks in advance, Shahar. You always have great insights and intuition about how to sell art and all the businesses side of the house. Can't wait. So accidentally sign in a few hours too early. No problem. I'm glad to stay late to watch tonight. And it's going to be available. This is not going to go away. Beverly Oliver, also from Edmonton, Alberta, in the house. Uh, and she's saying all my events are gone. She, uh, she is one of the instructors here at Curious Mondo, and she does a lot of art walks, which are very popular in her city uh, during, during the summertime. And then she, they also have some art walks inside galleries and things like that. And yes, it's all closed. Uh, and we have here with us, and thank you so much for taking your time and being here, Canada, USA, Portugal, Poland, Chile, Australia, Colombia, New Zealand, Puerto Rico. Thank you so much. So I told you about the cocooning, right, that we are going to feel safe at home. And I'll, I'll tie that to the business side in a moment. But I want to talk a little bit more before about behavior. So what happens right after this crisis is over? Let's say that one day we are told, go out and have fun. Okay, let's not think that this is going to be progressive or anything like that. The moment we can go out. Well, the moment we can go out, that's exactly what we are going to do. And we are going to do uh, really eager to go into places, for example, like retail. And you know why? Because we, we need to touch, we need to smell, we need to see other people. Restaurants will see a huge revival because we want to. We want that noise of people laughing, of people talking. You know, the the children around. We we long for all this because we all grew up with this. So we are going to go back to those places for a while. Like I said, we are going to go in droves into retail in spaces that we can touch, we can feel. Tourist attractions, all of them are going to see this huge spike right after the crisis is over. And then it fades a little bit. And it fades a little bit. Why? Because we will then say, oh, okay, I got it. Oh, everything is back to normal. But I feel a lot safer at home. Right. And then we retract a little bit. So this is going to be a change in behavior that we'll have. It's like right now. Right. There is a spike. There is a flattened curve and then it goes down a little bit. And that's how we are going to go, because first we'll be eager to see, smell, touch, 
you know, listen to people and, and all the, the cool things. I, I mean, there is nothing s sadder really than seeing images of the whole world empty right now. So we are longing for that. That's we, what we are going to do. With the cocooning, what are the, the things that impacts in business? So for example, the delivery options of anything will grow even more. This might be a moment where you're already using this so you don't have to get out of the house, but this is going to increase a lot. Again, because I want things to come with me in an environment that I control. Uh, we will be driven by two things. First, for a, quite a while, the fear. Fear that is this possible to happen again and just listening to the news you listen okay this is going to be over at some point but at fall it might come back again and you're thinking oh my gosh that cannot happen that just cannot happen something has to happen to avoid that so but that fear will be present because now we know that we are not that strong and we have no guarantees if this could happen anything else could happen well fear uh, it, it's bad in many forms but it's also good in many forms. Uh, it helps us keep us safe and do the right thing many times. Uh, but it helps us also uh, balance what's important and what's not. And that, sorry, I have something here bugging me. And then uh, it impacts how we behave. So, for example, what is important to you right now? What are you longing for? Remember the 2008 recession how interesting that, that was after it was over, right? Because when you're going through the crisis, that's never interesting, it's just scary. But remember that people used to have here in the States specifically, uh, I used to make fun that during springtime, you would see the houses, you go around the neighborhood and you would see a lot of garages open and you would see all kinds of things inside the garage, but cars. Right? There would be Christmas lights and boxes and a lot of stuff. And it was a, a little bit because of the desire to have things, but then we have too many things and we put it away uh, in the garage. Well, after the recession, that decreased a lot. Why? Because we start thinking, you know what? After all this that I've been through, through, these are things, right? They don't have value. They don't have emotional value. And that decreased a little bit, right? Because you are now looking for things that meant something to you. Well, now with this crisis, this is going to be even more important. We are going to be driven by purpose. You are seeing right now, you're being deprived of, of things like not being able, again, to hug a grandchild or to be in somebody's uh, birthday uh, or just to, to hang out with friends, go on a date, right? All these things that we took for granted all our lives. And that, that is that is taken from us at this moment for a good reason, but it's still, we are deprived of that. Well, once we go back there, we are going to think, okay, I want to do things that have a purpose to me. Because again, life has become much more precious with all this that is happening. So you are going to go for things that mean something or have an emotional value. Why is this important? You're thinking, but I'm watching this because I wanna learn stuff about how can I get my business going again understand that when you're presenting what you make and what you create, you are going to attach to purpose and you are going to attach to an emotional value or else you're not going to sell, okay? Because it has shifted. Uh, you're not going to buy a ring because it's diamond or gold. You're going to buy a ring because the design means something to you. It either means now in a relationship or it means uh, something from where you were a kid. I don't know, but you're going to be looking at that, pur uh, that purpose, right? Another, uh, and let me, I forget to read the questions here. Uh, Diana is saying, Shahar, you should do call me. Thank you, because I'm thinking, am I talking too many bad stuff? But, you know, the bad stuff is what creates what's next. Uh, Pegata, Shahar, you are very wise. I don't know about that. Thank you for those wonderful insights. Uh, Paula, hello from northern Minnesota. Elisa, I'm so good in isolation. Can't create an infinite. Yes, so many of us are okay being alone. And I think most of us are. It's just the fact that we were told to be uh, alone that bugs us. So we have a... a you know, kind of a, an adaptation here. But <clears throat> another thing we can predict. So I told you, you know, before before the, the recession, we had the garages full that went, went away. Now we are going to see the things with purpose. We are going to acquire things with purpose. But that doesn't mean we are not going to hoard. 
okay? There is a great chance that we are going to become hoarders, uh, either, either in groups or individually. And why? Even if you think about people that are uh, really, uh, they, they are not functioning well, they hoard to a, uh, a point that is not healthy whatsoever, so they have newspapers going through the floor. You've seen those shows. You know that many times, uh, many times, most times, it's something that they lost that causes that. So it's an emotional trigger that causes the new behavior. And they cannot get rid of things because if they do, they're going to lose something again. We're, we are all going to go to a certain point through this feeling that we are going to uh, seek that security that we lost during this time, right? Because we, right now we are not feeling safe. We are afraid somebody we love gets sick. So the security there is extremely important to us. Uh, in Chinese culture, it's represented by the back. They say it's the turtle. You need, if you don't feel safe here, you don't, you don't feel safe anywhere. Well, guess what? One way for us to feel safe is to hoard things. I hope it's not hoarding cakes and things that make you fat, right? But hoarding things. So maybe us artists, we want every single tool out there. Ah, 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 not an excuse for you to go buy more things. But it's a natural behavior after a crisis like this, right? Because we, we are looking for security and we don't trust production lines anymore because they have failed on us, right? Where are the masks? Where are the respirators? Where are all those things that we should have, especially in a country like, like here? So in order to compensate for that, there is a great uh, chance for us to go and try to hoard this. But at the same time, what I will desire to acquire is things that last longer. Okay, again, looking for that security, I, th I need something that will be here five years from now, 10 years from now. And again, here lies an opportunity for you that create art or you have a business as well, because it's how you're going to word things and how you're going to make things, even the material that you're going to use. Uh, you have to understand this movement because yes, I want more things, but I want things that have a meaning to me and that they will stay here with me. The fear of losing is really great and it will linger, it, it will linger. So these things are going to translate into the behavior when I spend my money. Now, what you have to, to understand also is that some things you were told do not happen. So for example, if you think right now, the economy is, has stopped. Many of us, we are not able to open our businesses, but that doesn't mean people are not spending. 80% uh, of the projection for sales are still going on around and across the border. Of course, restaurants are closed, that's an exception, but overall, and we have, uh, we've seen that it's just so far normal, okay? Because it's not a lack of money. This doesn't mean uh, we are not going to have an impact since just in the US we have 10 million people asking for, uh, for unemployment this will cause an impact. But don't think that people are not wanting to spend. If you remember the recession, people just put brakes on and wouldn't spend money on anything. That is not happening right now. Uh, Self-reliance will become even more important. Uh, we have preached this on, on, on Curious Mondo forever, right? It's part of our mission to make people more uh, able to create things and solve problems. And you're seeing now how many unsolved problems that we have. And the fact, I've seen this with us, we are giving a class this Thursday on how to make masks and protective gowns. Uh, why? Because people are asking for that. And why were they asking? You're, you might be asking, oh, there are patterns everywhere. Yes. But you know how many t people that they want to help right now, they, they want to do it, and they have the resources for, uh, to do it, but they never touch a sewing machine? Many, 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 unfortunately. Uh, so, so you're going to see a reverse on that because people will, they, you know, it's like the, it's the, the, the coin is dropping uh, that they need to be self-sufficient. 
and they need to be able to act when they want to act. So you have this group of people that want to help so bad uh, fulfill the needs out there for themselves as well. For you know, there are some states that are demanding people to wear masks when they go outside, and they want that, those, but they don't know how to touch a sewing machine. So you're going to see that this will become more and more important because should something happen again, and we all pray that it never does, but should something happen again, we need to be ready, right? And we need to be ready in the sense of how can I solve problems? Do I have the skills to do this or to do that? Again, another point that you can use in, in the benefit for your business. And then something that it didn't start now, it, it has started a, a little bit, a while ago, but it's going to become even more important is the movement of slow growth. What is slow growth? Uh, it's when you don't speak fast as I am doing right now. It's when you do things with mindfulness. So maybe if you're into embroidery, you heard the stitching uh, mindful stitching and mindful embroidery in the sense that when you go into a project you go really to have a zen moment to be able to buffer your brain and let things and ideas come to you or you meditate during the process it doesn't matter if it's embroidery drawing whatever well this is going to grow a lot because we're going to start and say maybe when somebody speaks to me I can stop and listen without interrupting for me, this is going to be an exercise, believe me. But this is why, because that interaction suddenly became extremely important, because that's not happening. Even if you are allowed to go to the park and take a walk with your dog, you're not talking to people. We are actually avoiding them, right? We don't want to get sick. So now when we come back, our importance of these interactions will change a lot. And most likely we are all going to adopt this slow growth where we pay attention to what is said, we pay attention to what's happening, and therefore we give more value into all this. So all mindfulness activities uh, will also grow from yoga classes to whatever it is that, that you can make or, or, or do that will improve people's time with themselves, right? When we are meditating and praying, we are giving us time also to focus on what's important, right? And this is going to grow. Let me read um, some, some comments here. Denise is saying, hi from Newfoundland, Canada. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, Beverly, I'm worried about joining society again. You know, it's going to be interesting because even if you have been to a grocery store, which unfortunately here in Utah, they are still full, uh, you're going to see that people are looking at people like, don't come close to me, like there is evil involved and the evil is the virus, right? But are we just going to go back and hug everybody? I wish so, but maybe not. Maybe we'll have to relearn a little bit of that as well. And that's okay, right? We, we need to give us okay to feel like we are feeling right now and to, to understand that the fear, the way you are acting, uh, it's because of the situation that is going on and don't blame yourself. Uh, I was talking to, to Nashla the other day and you know, we have tons of things to do. We haven't stopped working and we are also adapting and changing as we go because things are going to change. But we were feeling lazy and I said, you know what? <laughs> There's a global pandemic going on. We have the right to be weak, to be sad, even to be depressed for a while or and not do nothing, just stare to the, uh, the walls if we want to. Because our body and our mind and our emotions, they need to find a new balance. And it's not something easy right now. Okay, so you, you have to give yourself the time for that. But yes, when we go out again and interact with people again, it might be a little different than what you are used to. Like I, I told you at the beginning, the, the normal will not be the old normal. It will be a new normal. And we are all going to adapt and love that at some point. But there is a transition point happening. Uh, Paula is saying, like family members that lived through the depression didn't throw anything away. Exactly. The same kind of behavior because, you know, we are feeling this thing that we are losing and we don't want to lose anymore. So that might become very, very uh, f strong. 
chill. Oh goodness, I'm already a craft hoarder. I'm doomed. Yeah, we can use that as an excuse too, right? I need to feel safe, darling. I'm going to buy more supplies. Um, Guess 8963, I'm worried that the priority of people's spending will be food, shelter, and art will be a lower priority. We are, I, have, I have a point to talk about that in a second. My creative juices have gone down the drain. I have so much inventory from two shows that were canceled. It is hard to get revved up to create again. Yes, it is, and uh, you're not alone, but... The light at the end of the tunnel is actually good for artists. If we don't buy into, you know, what people say out there, yeah, you have to be careful to what and who you listen to. Uh, we are strong, Shai saying, we are stronger now. We will be stronger and stronger and smarter and better in the long run. Hang in there. Exactly. We will. We, we uh, humans, you know, we are survivors and I... We are gladiators. We do what we have to do to get there. So I, I don't have a doubt that things are going to get a lot better. Sarah Baker, touch is so important to animals. It will be hard if things don't go back to hugging, etc. But it is important to learn how to keep people healthy. I think it's, uh, for me, it's eye-opening, this. You know, you, you start, again, putting the right weight on the right things. So who cares which car you have now? You care if your kids are safe, if you're the, the, person, the people around you are okay. This, that, that's what matters right now. And so I think that this unbalance that we are living actually will make us balance more things. And again, we are not going to pay attention to what, what is expensive out there that, uh, that is glitter and everybody wants, but what has meaning to us, right? Another, in, uh, another industries or, or things that you can dab into are venues to healing, and elevating humanity. So again, uh, many life coaches, for example, you might see a, re a, a, a great revival with that, not only uh, seeking balance, but seeking to over overcome. Of course, health is going to be huge, right? Because uh, we're, we might be eating all Doritos out, out there right now, but we are thinking I need to be healthier. Right. I, I, I need to be here for the long run and I cannot be defeated by a tiny little thing. So the health industry, of course, is going to see is already seeing, by the way, diet and health industry. And anything that are, is more Zen that will help us center. We are all living this moment that we know we are not balanced. I am not balanced. I, I know you are not either. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to every day wake up and see, okay, now this is happening. And now that has happened. Now it's the worst week. Oh, the next week is going to be the worst week. It's very difficult. So we are going to look for things that center us. And local experiences. Now here's a huge uh, thing for you th that you are an artist. Uh, think about what experiences can you provide. Again, for example, if you look, I don't know if you ever looked into the Airbnb site where you have short-term rentals out there. One of the things that they offer is the experiences. So for example, you can have a class on how to beat flowers for a group of visitors to, the, to your state in that week or that day. And, and you're marketing actually outside your local, but people, when they come to that place, that's what they want. They want a local experience, something that is unique to that place. I've heard many times the term everywhere America, where you go from city to city and you, you see the same chains and you see the same colors, right? Uh, the other day I was in Louisiana and I told Ashley, it's beautiful because everything is so different than what you see in some big cities, right? And you have color and you have different architecture and things like that. So uh, it's a local unique experience. And this happened in December for me. But imagine now, we are going to give so much more value. I've been, I, I know a lot of people in the, in the city I live I've been involved in chambers of commerce and things like that for many years. So I know a lot of people here. And I know a lot of people, especially business owners, that they are suffering with everything that is going on, of course. And I long for the moment that I can actually go and support them more. Right now, it's complicated, right? Many are closed. But I long for that, right? That I, I want that woman that has that business and that guy that has that other business and that restaurant over there. Because I know, I know them and I know their families. 
we are all going to have this thing about we're going to, to be really into what's local. And many times your art can depict what's local. So you may be thinking, okay, up to this point I saw this, this and that, but what if now I focus in icons where I live? So for example, here in Utah, if I start making arches, for example, would be an example of what could be. Uh, if I make dolls that are pioneers, no brainer, right? It's, it's local, it's part of the culture here. So how could you do that with your art? Because one thing that is crucial here is that the secret to be successful when the crisis is over is the secret to be able to adapt. You will need to adapt to different situations. Sometimes the situations are the things that you create. You stop doing, I don't know, fairy dolls, and then you start doing something that means more to the local community. Other, other moments are just, okay, you are going to start being okay with being online. I belong to a lot of groups here in town related to different arts, and it's very interesting to see how people are resistant to go online. That's kind of your route to freedom right now, right? You, you will have to go online for, for quite a while. This is not going to be over in a week. You need to get your business going soon. You will need to pay attention to this. So just have in your mind that even though you might not like the idea of uh, having to do something you're not comfortable with. I know people that hate social media, for example. You might have to, no matter what. So just be okay with adapting to a new norm because uh, that is something that you have to, to pay attention. So talking about that, I will read the questions in a second. But let's talk now about art and selling art, okay? Uh, I have here, this is a laptop, so my finger does not work when I try to scroll things. Uh, Judy is saying, the situation has forced me to slow down and let my creative side develop. It's a great time, actually, to do that. Melissa, the hard thing at the moment is all shows being delayed or canceled. And, you know, that might happen even for summer. So that's, that's why I think you need now to start embracing different ways of selling because we don't know how long this is going to take. Yeah, and it may, take, um, it may take away the summer for us. And I know summer is, is a huge thing for all of us uh, into arts. So let's, let's think about new possibilities. I hope I will give you some ideas. Uh, Lisa is saying, it is so sad that it took a pandemic for me to have time at home to create. I was thinking that this weekend uh, because you, I don't want to be home. You know, I, I like to be out. But the fact is that now I do have the time that I was complaining I never had. And I told you before in other situations that time is our most precious asset. We cannot renew. We can renew anything else, but we cannot renew time. And now we have the time we didn't have before. So instead of thinking you're bored and you watch all the Netflix shows there is to watch, you start thinking, maybe if I go to my studio, start organizing and looking at the things that you have, you know, creativity will spark again and you start creating because this commodity, the, the time, you now have that in favor to you. So you should be th being thankful for that. Yes, I'm not doing many things that I wanted to do, but the time that I have, I never have, especially at the beginning of the year where we have all these plans and all these things to get going and all the shows coming up out there. We never have time. We have now. So use that even to question where you want to go as an artist. Um, let me see this. Bella Rose, with so many people being at risk, living our healthiest life is crucial now and going forward. Exactly. Beverly, I'm feeling so tired, really needing to manage my daily energy uh, put out. I, I think, Beverly, we all are. We were coming back today from the studio and we were thinking, boy, it's, it's just Monday and we are exhausted, mentally exhausted, emotionally exhausted. Uh, give, give time for you to be like that because you know, it is what it is right now, and let's accept that, that we have to find the new balance for us. Cheryl, uh, don't you think that people who have been deprived will develop or appreciate art and entertainment? I'm going to go into that now. Uh, Diana, I have been trying to buy local for a long time and enjoy that. Me too, but now I, now I think I have a new appreciation for that. 
uh, Bella, learning what we can control and what we can't is critical. Yes. Um, the, I don't remember who said that, but I used to use that when we, we used to speak. You worry about the things you can control. The things that you cannot control, there's nothing you can do. So you can fight on social media all day long because of this party or that party, this president or that president. You cannot change that unless you go out and vote when it's time. But you can change things around you. And that's where the, your focus should be. You cannot control if this will last two weeks or four weeks. You can't. But you can control what you're going to be doing with your time. So worry about the things that you can control. A pixie, one of my pups is barking uh, at your dog. I know, you can hear them, right? Uh, venues like this that offer support are essential. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Denise. Uh, it's amazing right now that people are paying more attention to the arts, free concerts and endless free online art activities. Hopefully this trend will carry us forward. Yes, why? Because that brings us emotions, arts, the con uh, concerts that you have, whatever is free out there. It takes our mind from what's bad. It makes us focus again on things that we like. And it, it, it moves emotions around. You hear a song that maybe you heard 10,000 times in your life, but now it's making you cry because it's getting the, the flow of your emotions out and saying, okay, this is how I'm dealing with that. So yes, uh, art is essential. Art keeps us sane. Right. So I wrote here, I'm not essential versus boredom because uh, I heard already many artists saying, no, art is not going to sell. It's not essential to people. Really? Could you be sitting in a room now with empty white walls for a very long time? Nothing. A chair. It will be like torture. Right. Uh, we, we long and we seek things that makes us happy, that, that deal with emotion, make us deal with emotions. Uh, so things that have meaning to us. So for example, if I have dogs and I have dog pictures in my house, that will make me happy when I'm here. So we might be bored, some of us might be bored because we've been home for three, four weeks, but art and how you control the art inside your home are extremely important. Uh, many of us, for us to put our emotions into place, we go and organize things, right? And actually, that is a very good exercise. So if you're feeling depressed or something, you go and start with the sock drawer and go from there. Why? Because it helps our brain organize. So every time we start moving things around and seeing a better place for this or a better place for that, what we are really doing is allowing our brain also to compartmentalize, what, however you say that word, right? And, and looking for meaning into everything. It's very important. I told you we are going to cocoon again, right? We are going to come back to our homes. It, it is going to become extremely important how we decorate our home, the items that we have there. We are probably going to throw out a bunch of plasticky stuff that has no meaning, but if you had it with things that bring meaning to you or feel that sense of lasting longer or has any type of emotional value. So for example, if you go and you get your grandma's doilies and you make fabric flowers out of those, they are going to have a higher uh, importance to you than something very pretty that you may buy uh, in a store that you never knew who made it, why it made it or not. So I had a, uh, something here that I said, I, 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 let me see what I saw that. I saw a comment about this that I wanted to remember, but you remind me if I don't come. So how are the ways that we are going to be able to sell our art? A very important part, and we always talk about this at Curious Mondo, but you are going to have to become a good storyteller, right? Stories are, we are wired for stories. That's how our ancestors would keep uh, cultures alive and myths alive, right? It's telling stories. We are wired for that. So every time there is a story, we want to see the beginning, the end. The brain cannot cope with an answer question. That's why we are so unbalanced right now. We, we have so many unanswered questions. So it sticks around trying to figure out what's going on. 
So you need to learn how to tell stories and not sell. Now, it's funny because I know most people I talk to, they hate selling, they hate marketing, right? So we say, we sell all day long, whoever you are, uh, wherever you live, with whomever you live, you're selling all the time. You're selling your husband into going out for dinner or washing the dishes. After all, now it's three meals a day at home. Somebody else has to wash the dishes. Uh, you talk to your kids to do the homework or be homeschool. Uh, you talk to your pets to do what, what they have to do. You're selling all the time. You just don't name that way so you don't feel bad. But comes the moment where it is your pieces, you start self-doubting yourself, you start saying you're not good enough, and you, you label selling as evil, as a bad thing. You have to change that. But the way you, you have to be okay selling because there is no money coming in if you're not selling something, right? Now, the way you sell, is, it's changing and it's going to change very much in the near future. We are going to have to become storytellers. Why? Because you know people want to feel safe. You know people are, are, are dealing still with fear. You know people just want things that last. They want things that have meaning to them. You have to translate that. So when you create whatever you create, be a painting, a sculpture, whatever it is, you have to translate all that to the person. And sometimes it's by telling why you create it, or and other times it's uh, saying uh, the story behind what you created. So Beverly is watching, and I know she has a story where I think she made three garden herons, the birds, and she uses t-shirts and, and a fabric harness to do that. So she created that for a facility, and it was to to mean uh, to show the meaning of family. Right? The, the kid, the mother, and the father, and uh, the process of eternity and creation. So she tells the story much better than I'm doing right now, but there is a story of why she created that piece and what that piece meant to her and to the people that got that in their gardens. This is the important part, not if it's made... I mean, the T-shirt part in her case is, is interesting, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter... If these, these are made with seed beads, and seed beads, they cost what, a dollar, two dollars? I can tell you, oh, I spent years learning how to make these, and they're gorgeous, and I use the best type of seed beads, like Czech seed beads, and in, in beautiful colors, and they are only $3.95 each. That's an expensive flower. Or I can say, you know, I love flowers. Uh, I, I just love spring and the colors, but tulips have a very important thing to me because it was my mother's favorite flower. She would always tell people that she loved tulips. And I remember many times my father going, because we lived in a tropical country, uh, tulips didn't last long. So he would go right at the beginning of the winter and get the tulips for my mother. And unfortunately, none of them are here again. Uh, maybe your mother, maybe I just dropped the sound, but uh, maybe maybe that rings a bell with you or not, but I have now an emotional connection with the flowers, and maybe you have too, because the moment you're looking, it's, you know what? My brother's favorite flower was tulip, and, and this happened, and whatever. I'm giving you examples out of, the, out of my mind right now. They might not be the best, but I think you get it that it needs to have that emotional connection, either because it's a story to you that you want to tell or what they mean as a whole. You can bring the meaning of tulips. I don't know what they are, but you could bring that as well in a conversation. So you, you are going to have to get a lot better into storytelling. One more thing, and I'll, I'll read the questions. Um, visibility versus client. Now more than ever, again, you're going to use online uh, to be able to create that visibility during this time. So the first two weeks, at least here in the US, I think we were all panicking about stuff, but now that start, we're, we started breathing again, right? Uh, it's important that you are top of mind for your, for your prospects and your customers. With that said, you have to be a little careful on how you create that visibility. So we all know that everybody will use live streaming, live streaming and Zoom and online classes. And yes, that those are very good routes, but you have to be careful how you approach all this in the sense that you need to educate your audience. 
We are talking about business. We are not talking about becoming influencers, right? Uh, if you can do both, awesome. But if I'm trying to become an influencer, all I'm going to do is post stuff all day everywhere. And, and of course, with the right story to engage people. But if I'm trying to sell it, it's very important for me to attract people that at some point will be willing to spend money because or else there is no business. So the very first mistake people do when they go online, and maybe we'll, we'll save one day, just maybe Friday, just to talk about this online uh, persona that you need to, to have, is that they go, especially artists, they start and they start teaching and doing tutorials and stuff like that just because, right? Well, if I educate my audience that everything is free, do you think they will ever be willing to pay me money? Let me tell you a lesson learned. When we open a Curious Mondo, of course, tiny company, no money for advertising. We were thinking, so how do we get out there? How do we get people to pay attention to us? And our, our first thought was, well, let's look for artists that are huge on YouTube because they have the audience and that's what we need. So let's go there. Very soon we found out that bringing those artists meant also not bringing sales because yes, they had a lot of visibility. Yes, they had a lot of people following them. All of them educated and not paying a dime. After all, it's YouTube, right? And even though you could move them from this door to this door here, they still said, no, with this guy, I don't spend money. There's everything there for free. See, so we are going to talk more about that. Um, Denise is saying, it's amazing right now that people are paying more attention to the art. Oh, that I read. Uh, Diana said, I actually tried to clean my workstation, planning to do something different than dolls. Exactly. Um, Terry, I am worried people will remain frightened of, of health buying things for, from individuals. Are we, are, are we really th going to think from now on? It's a question, right? Uh, that everybody that I interact with can make me sick? Do you think this will last? Uh, I can see that in a very twisted way, but uh, maybe right at the beginning when we are allowed to go out, if that, especially if that doesn't happen in phases, and I hope it does happen in phases, uh, yes, we are going to go out and we are going to be thinking, what about fall? What about now? Can, can, I, I think, yes, at the, the, the beginning, in the long term, I don't think that's how we are wired. And if we start thinking that people are a threat, it's not the people that are a threat, right? It's a, a virus that to control. So I don't know. I think you're right, Terry, at the beginning. At the beginning, I think we are all going to be careful. I know if I was a little germaphobe before, I'm a lot more right now. So I'm, I'm worrying much more about cleanliness and things that I didn't care so much before. But I don't know if I'm going to stay away because I will let that fear drive. And that's the problem with fear. A little bit of fear keeps us safe. Too much fear uh, doesn't allow us to move forward. So we need to be able to control that. And I hope we all can do that. Because uh, yes, we are fearful of things now and, and I think that's expected. But if that fear takes the lead in everything that we do in the future. It's not going to be good for us or healthy. Uh, Renee is saying, to keep my mind off of what is happening outside, I decided to do my spring cleaning and just finished today after Jody's class. It made me feel great uh, getting something accomplished. Tomorrow I plan to get into my studio and create while watching the other t three classes. Exactly, I, I did the same in the beginning of last week. I start organizing things here uh, because it helps me buffer, right? And, he, and I get that accomplishment. The other thing I did was finish, I think just yesterday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I finished five projects that were set aside and that brought me accomplishment. You know, it's the thing that, yes, I'm good. Yes, I can do this. So it's a very good exercise. Uh, guest 8963, I really enjoy listening to your ideas. Uh, thanks for doing this. I'm thinking I'm way over the 30 minutes, but I don't have a timer here. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I watched Jody's class this morning and made flowers all evening. And that kept you from thinking bad things, right? You were thinking about spring. You were thinking about birds. You were thinking about all the things you can make with glass. And, and that's the healthiest thing we can do. Um, 
in Belarus, people are definitely feeling deprived now too. And when something evokes an emotional response, they decide they need that item and, uh, and it's not a want anymore. It's I need that. That's a very good thing. Uh, and, and that's when you're selling, you have to be aiming for. Uh, we all want things, right? I could have two more cars, right? But I don't need one. Uh, if you're coming and selling me into a car, you, you're going to get me into needing that car. Uh, so, for example, in my case, you're going to have to talk to me about all the adventures, the places I can go where people don't go. I'm the kind of tourist that I don't go to the tourist attraction. I run away from the tourists. So can I go see bears? You know, can I, can I go bird watching with that car? You're going to tell a better story than how powerful the thing is because I couldn't care less about it. Uh, Bella is saying, I uh, know Bella, Paula, if we live in fear, we won't see all the wonderful and beautiful things going on. And there are many, right? Even when you look right now, you're, you're seeing what? Rivers getting clean again. The air, the air uh, being pure again. I mean, there, there are good things happening. Even your values shifting right, from material things to the people that you love. And, you know, maybe, maybe you would call a friend once or twice a month, if so, and now maybe you're calling every week. So all these things that are shifting, uh, they can be very good things too. Okay, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to take one day. Nash, can you tell me how long we've been going through? One hour, so way be beyond what I wanted. Uh, Let's do one about the online part, because again, we are all going to go online. And I told you, you have to be careful how you go online. One thing that we know it's going to happen is that one venue for most artists, uh, it's going to be teaching online, right? And yes, you can make money. And many artists are right now thinking, that's the only thing I can do, right? I cannot go to shows. I cannot uh, go to in-person classes. The, sh the, the festivals were all canceled. How do I do? Yes, online uh, It's not the only one, by the way, but many of us are thinking it's the only way to go. Again, you, you are going to need to plan this before. And please, don't fall for advertising that you're going to see on social media that you can make millions giving online classes because that's the route to go. We all know online classes are going to increase. You have to have a plan and you have to have a very good selling plan because yes, I think any of us can create an online course, right? If, if you think about it, it's a no brainer and you need some structure, but it can be done. And you don't have to have fancy equipment. You're going to see tomorrow when I show you. Actually, you have to have very little investment to get started on that. But the thing is, you can create as many courses as you want. How are you going to sell is the real question. And you're going to see an explosion of online courses. And you're going to think everybody's making both load of money. And I can tell you, even before it happens, no. It can be extremely frustrating. I lived in the, in the time that coaches and marketers would create online classes uh, to sell high-end coaching and stuff like that. And I can tell you from experience that 90% of them underperform in sales, even though they knew marketing. Because it's not that simple. We as humans, we like what's fun. And we don't understand learning as fun. So even the word learn, you can see that is for people that understand how to sell, it's not used because it's a bad word. It's like using the word change because we know humans don't like change. They don't like to learn either. So there is your very first obstacle. You could be selling anything else. It would be easier than an online course because the person doesn't want to learn. They want to get the idea. So they want to watch a free tutorial because, oh, I got it, I got it, I can go and do it. But when it comes to investing into the learning process, you have to sell it in a different way. Because if it's just, oh, it's an online course on this, doesn't matter what this is. They don't want a, a course. I mean, 
ask any kid if they, right now they are going to say they love to go to school, right? Because they're home. But usually, no. They, they, I, I remember I would put the thermometer on the light bulb so you would get warm, and I would tell my mother I had a fever so I could not, I could skip school a day or two. I mean, we don't like that structure because in our minds is that structure of repetition, of having to memorize things, on having to be right and going through tasks. So everything that encompass the learning part for us is negative. So if, you, if it's in your plans to start selling online courses, you're going to have to think a lot more, not what you're going to be teaching, because you, you could teach anything, is what, how are you going to tell the story about what you're selling? And it cannot be, oh, I have this amazing online course and you're going to love to learn with me. Because you're saying that the things that they don't want to hear, course and learn. So start thinking about that. We are going to talk a, a lot more. So yes, online courses can be. It's not the only thing you can do. Believe me, I, I already have here several points that I want to cover with you about things that you can be doing uh, to revive your art business. And many of them are online. But you can do it and you can sell. But the very, very important thing is this. If online courses is one of your options, how are you going to position that? And then everything that I talked, you may even think, oh, it was not about business. It was about behavior. Well, revisit that now. Maybe rewatch this and start putting down what you think could be the value of that. What, who would they become by taking a course with you? If even when you buy a car, again, a car is a commodity, right? Uh, even when you buy a car, who will you become when you get that car? I remember that, you know, Nashla had, this, had the same desire of having a Jeep, right? It was a big thing because it means off-roading, it means adventure, it means all those things that I told you. Well, it took me most of my life to be able to buy one. And the moment you touch the wheel, you feel that adventure. I do not take my car in muddy places or I don't go up the rocks because I, I, you know, it took me 50 years to get one. I don't want to, you know, broken, but I feel that adventure, right? So who will they become by buying from you or taking a class from you? This is the answer you need to have. And not if you're going to teach fiber or if you're going to teach beading or if you're going to teach painting. That's not the important part. You can sell any. Who will they become by taking a class with you or to buy or buying art from you? What are they going to feel on a very high emotional level? What do you need to translate into that? And even what kind of words you're going to say? Because you might be thinking right now, huh, I cannot use course. I cannot use learn. How on earth can I sell a course? Right? And you cannot use sell, and you cannot use buy either. <laughs> See? <laughs> there are many things you can just not say. So who will they become by taking a course from you or buying art from you? And on an emotional level, what are you really selling? You know, we can sell a common commodity. An example I use so many times, uh, chocolate, right? You can go and buy chocolate for 50 cents at a Walmart. Or you can go to certain companies. We have many local ones that are very good, but there is one in Illinois that I use as an example, Voges Chocolate, that they used to sell $7 a bar. And I remember at one point, a, a Easter bunny was $70. And they would sell like crazy. It belongs to a woman or used to belong to a woman. Uh, why? Because when you get the package, if you ever ate that chocolate, and you read the description, she would start with open the bar and crack a piece. Listen to that crack. It's like cracking, and she would go with that. Smell the chocolate. Where does it take you when you smell? Now put it in your mouth and let it melt. And feel the chocolate on the top of your mouth. And she would go in that description, tiny description, but using all five senses uh, and selling this piece of chocolate that was amazing. It was just chocolate. Very good chocolate, but just chocolate. She could charge seven times more than any other 
And there are many other companies that can do that. So think about these things because we tend to focus, how am I going to organize this? Uh, what am I going to teach? What color do they want for my piece? When that's not what matters. It's all these things that I told you. So just to finish, uh, Nancy D says, sorry I joined late. This was so enjoyable. Shahar always stretches our brains. Thank you, Lisa. Love this. I needed to hear this. I'm somewhat at the same wavelength as Shahar. In many ways of thinking and her direction is wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Diana, thank you for doing this. Island Girl, thank you so much, Shahar. As always, you are such a pleasure. Thank you. That's not what Nashla says sometimes. Yeah, you're so boring. <laughs> <laughs> always enjoy Shahar and Nashla. Well, so we went longer than I planned. Uh, I, I had planned these sessions for uh, around 30 minutes. Tomorrow we are going to talk about live streaming and I'll touch uh, more on the online possibilities for you in here. Don't be afraid online. Don't be afraid of social media. And yes, there is social media outside Facebook as well. We know that's a very important place for, for especially if you sell for people 40 and older, but there are other possibilities as well. And we are going to be talking about those and I'll show you a basic setup. It's the same that we use when we do the symposiums. So something very, very easy, fast for you to get it going. And then we'll talk about other possibilities other than the online uh, courses. But no, start thinking. Again, I started with all the fear and all the situation that is going on, but I hope you understood that it's really because we are in a movement that is going to change. And when the sun shines again, things will be a bit different, but we will be ready to embrace that. We will be ready to to be successful, and that's what we, we need. We already know how to create beautiful things. Now we need to put those beautiful things in our minds and in our actions moving forward. I see you back here tomorrow. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time.